غيري تحلق في الثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله العظيم الخبير المتعالي الحمد لله الذي لا تحجبه ظلمات الليالي الحمد لله الذي أرسل جبال العوالي سبحانه من إله عظيم يغفر الذنوب ولا يبالي لا إله إلا الله بها نحيا وبها نموت وبها نلقى الله وبها نوالي وأشهد أن عظيمنا وقدوتنا ومولانا قرة عيني محمد ابن عبد الله عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين My dear brethren and sisters, friends and colleagues um, It is my first time in, in the Philippines and uh, MashaAllah, you're a wonderful community to be with. And uh, I ask Allah Rabbul Izza, the one who gathered me and you here today from the ends of the globe, or from the different ends of the globe, here upon his obedience, may he Azza wa Jal gather us together in Jannat al-Firdaus. Because Wallahi al-Azim, you must understand it is a miracle for people from such different backgrounds to come together only out of the will of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid. Otherwise, I don't know you. I don't. You're from the Philippines. I am from Afghanistan. The only thing that joins me together with you is the Deen of Muhammad. And may Allah Rabbul Izza out of this deen of Muhammad join us together in Firdaus al-A'la. And the Arabs say it beautifully, you know. They say, Ahzanu qalbi la tazul. The agonies of my heart will persist. Hatta ubashar bil qabul. Until I am given the glad tidings of acceptance. وأرى كتابي باليمين and I see my book in my right وتقر عيني بالرسول and my eyes rest on the prophet so my Allah Rabbul Izzah as he gathered me and you here tonight may he gather us again in Jannat al-Firdaus and may he give us out of his mercy although we are undeserving of it the companionship of the prophet and the sight of our Lord say Ameen Muslims and um I do wish to thank tonight before I start um, the wonderful organization that is uh, the Connect Institute and uh, with these Connecting Pearls conferences. Um, you will rarely find, and I say this lillah, wallahi lillah, you will rarely find people as committed, as dedicated, as attentive to detail, uh, as wholesome as these individuals. Wallahi, I came to my hotel and um, the team and the brothers were waiting there um, long before I arrived with their gift packs and, and their niceties. And not only for me, but for people that came much later than me, and I think Ustaz Wail and, uh, and Mufti Mink and the other shuyukh arrived later from the other event. Um, may Allah Rabbul Izza bring it in front of you in the day when nothing avails you but the mercy of Allah Rabbul Izza. Our topic today, my dear brethren and sisters, is the story of a great civilization. A great civilization. If I say it is the story of the giants of the human nation, I wouldn't be an, it would not be an extravagant claim. The Quran says, 
this people, this nation came after Nuh alayhi salam. So you know the story, you've heard it. Allah Rabbul Izzah destroyed the people of Nuh. After them, the scholars say 80 people survived. From the 80, only the children of Nuh had progeny. The rest, their nasal died. Only Nuh alayhi salam would have children. So imagine, that is why they call Nuh alayhi salam the second Adam. Because once again, it started with him. So this Nuh alayhi salam had children. So his children are the children of a prophet and not an ordinary prophet from the Ulil Azmi min al Rusul, the greats amidst the prophet. And one of the tribes and one of the children's children and the tribe that came after him are called the children of Ad or the tribe of Ad. So that was fresh in their minds and in their narratives that a little while ago, Nuh and his, uh, the people of Nuh were destroyed. And Allah saved Nuh and some of the... That the story was fresh. Yet still, being close to a time of a past prophet, not too many generations had passed. The people, and although Allah had cleansed the world once already, again shaitan comes to poison the aqidah of man. So now again they turn to idol worship. I will come to this a little bit later, but let me describe these people. The scholars say that they were such mighty a creation that if they held a palm tree, they could pull it out with one hand. Mighty creation. And Allah Himself, His Creator says, Alati lam yukhlaq mithluha fil bilad. A creation the like of which was not created on the lands. This is not all, you know. Our youngsters, the young man today or the young lady today, they go to the gym and work out. You know, so mashallah, after a few months he looks, says, subhanallah, you know, I've got muscles. So his walk changes. You've seen the, the walk? The walk changes. Or Allah gives him some wealth, the way he walks changes. Or Allah gives him some fame, his walk, do you know what I mean by the walk? His attitude changes. You can see it on him. But still, he is a tiny creation. The people of Ad could pull a palm tree out with their hands. And the Quran says, imad. They were men like pillars. Huge creation. And such a magnificent creation that not only were they satisfied with the ordinary of life, they started to do really novel things. The Quran says, أَتَبْنُونَ بِكُلِّ رِيعٍ آيَةً تَعْبَثُونَ On every pinnacle they used to build a monumental building. You, they wouldn't live in it. You'd just look and go, wow. You know when a person builds a building for nothing, when he's already overcome the normal struggles of life, what else? Let me build a work of art. And you would think if a person is big and mighty, he would be dumb and clumsy. Uh, with all due respect. And this is just... You know, you would think he's, he's big... The people of Ad were, were advanced in civilization. The Quran says, You will take industry. You, you busy yourself in industry. What type of industry? Industry designed to make you live forever. So they lived long lives, thousands of years. If I take an average of a thousand, it wouldn't be an extravagant claim. So can you imagine a person living to a thousand? And multiple wives, 
and how many kids they were, and Allah blessed them. And the Prophet tells them, and he gave you livestock and children, abundance. And you would think if a person has a lot of children, then he has financial problems. Allah Rabbul Izza says, and I gave you gardens and water to come out of it. A spoiled nation. Everything good was gone. You know, they had size. They had intelligence, they had sophistication, they had civilization. Everything was going for them. Whatever good, it, it was happening. Their problem was shaitan had tricked them from their belief. And you want to see temperament. You know, what would his attitude be like? The Quran says, وَإِذَا بَطَشْتُمْ Batashtum Jabbarin and when you come into conflict and confrontation, you annihilate your enemies. They wouldn't just beat them, they, they were excessive in killing. Like if you opposed and a war broke out between you and Ad, they, they would make sure that not you and your progeny ever raise their head again. Wa Ida Batashtum Batashtum Jabbarin. To this people, Allah sent a messenger. Qala ta'ala, wa ila aadin akhahum huda. And to the people of Aad, we sent huda alayhi salam. I want to just stop there for one sec to, to link to the talk that happened previously. Almost always, almost always, whenever Allah sent a warner and a prophet and a da'i and a proper, proper uh, promoter and a propagator to a people, He sent it from amidst them. وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ To the people of Ad, He sent their brother Hud, as in from the same tribe, as in from, from, you know, from the same bloodline. This highlights one thing and I want to highlight it here today very quickly. Is that when a brother calls a brother to something, there's, there's an element of love. Because you care about your brother. You stand for your brother, you protect your brother, you maintain your brother, you boost him up, you, you know, you, you're, you're there for your brother. So whenever Allah sent a prophet, he made sure that there is that love in the da'wah that says, listen, I need to save him from Jahannam. So Muslims, we have reached a sad place in life today where we boast happy in our silos that I have a good family, mashaAllah, we are sheikhs from four generations, ten generations. We don't mix with the raggedy rag, you know, we, we are not, we are not, alhamdulillah, we are, we are, you know, a cut above the rest. Totally opposite to the murad of Allah and the murad of the Rasul. You are meant to be part of a people and care for the people and spread the da'wah to the people with the hope that Allah would save them and save you through saving them. So Allah Rabbul Aziz says, وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا His message, قَالَ يَا قَوْمُ He said, O oh my people, يَا قَوْمُ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ O my people, worship Allah alone. Besides Him, there is no being worth worshipping. I am sure you have heard it all day long, but I want to stress this just a little bit more. Muslims understand, in the heavens above, nor the earth below, is there a concept of greater importance to the Dhul Arsh al Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yurid? than the concept of the oneness of Allah Rabbul Izzah. He Azza wa Jal sent 124,000 mes 124, messengers. Each one came with this message, O oh my people, worship Allah alone. Besides Him, there is no being worth worshipping. قال تعالى وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهِ From before we sent Nuh alayhi salam, his message, 
O oh my people, worship Allah alone. Besides Him, there is no being worth worshiping. Wa ila adin akhahum huda. Qala ya qawm i'budu Allah ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh. To the people of Ad, we sent Hud alayhi salam his message. O oh my people, worship Allah alone. Besides him, there is no being worthy of worship. Wa ila Thamud akhahum saliha. And to the people of Thamud, we sent Salih alayhi salam his message. Qala ya qawm i'budu Allah ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh. O my people, worship Allah alone. Besides him, there is no being worthy of worship. Wa ila Madian akhahum shu'iba. And to the people of Madian, we sent shu'iba. Shu'ib alayhi salam, his message, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُهُ O oh my people, worship Allah alone. Besides him, there is no being worth worshipping. Allah Rabbu Al-Izza sent Musa alayhi salam, and in part gave him the Ten Commandments. And one of the first of the Ten Commandments, and understand this, in the Semitic cultures, the first means the most important of the Ten Commandments. In the Hebrew, the Shama, Israelu, Adnai, Luhainu, Adnai, Echad. Hear, O Israel, that the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. Thirteen centuries after Musa, alayhi salam, Isa came, they asked him in the book of Matthew, Master, Rabbi, which is the first of the Ten Commandments? He answered word for word the word of Musa. Shama, hear, O Israel, that the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. Allah Rabbul Izza is one and only. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttering the words that Allah Rabbul Izza revealed to him says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, O Muhammad, Allah is one and only. And even if you are not a prophet, you still proclaim the same. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ And when Luqman alayhi salam, you know, told his, his family, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah, my son don't ever commit shirk with Allah Rabbul Izzah, inna shirk la dhulmun azim, this associating partners with Allah Rabbul Izzah is a stupendous crime, and as tawheed is the biggest concept between the heavens and earth, the biggest sin in the sight of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yureed is to associate a partner and with the majesty of Allah Rabbul Azza. To give someone else the characteristics of Allah Rabbul Izzah. To bring someone else equal to the majesty of Allah Rabbul Izzah. To use someone else as intermediaries between you and Allah Rabbul Izzah. Subhanallah, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Allah will not forgive those who associate partners with him. Wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. And Allah Rabbul Izzah will forgive anything else that comes after this. وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Whoever associates a partner with Allah, Rabbu Al-Izzah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ Allah makes Jannah haram for him and his abode will be Jahannam. So understand, dear, dear Muslims, that the most important topic now, yesterday and tomorrow and forever is to make sure that you know who your Lord is, so that you don't get murky and confused and lost in your aqeedah, in your belief. Allah orders you to do this. Fa'alam and learn annahu la ilaha illallah, that there is no being worth worshipping except for Allah Rabbul Izza. Learn. The oneness of Allah, learn the attributes of Allah, learn the qualities of Allah, understand who your Lord is. For too long we have been, con you know there's been confusion in the ummah about their Lord. For too long they've gone to graves asking for help. For too long they've given the majesty, the attributes of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid to others. For too long he has feared other than Allah Rabbul Izza. And when, you, listen to me Muslims, when you become a muwahid, when you understand who your Lord is, and who you worship, and who's on your side, as in Allah Rabbul, Allah will free you from the shackles of this world. Right now you're afraid of your boss and of every man. 
He will cut my wage. He will do this. He will do that. You, you live a life of fear. And you become a muwahid and you realize, Inna Allah huwa razzaq dhul quwwati al-mateen. Allah is the provider. But you say, Ustaz, but I get my money from, from, the, from my job, whether it's a, you know, a institution or whether it's an organization or a school, whatever. I get it from him. I want to give you an example, Muslims. Imagine you're traveling somewhere and me and you are friends. And then you had some problem, a difficulty comes, so you give me a call, you say, listen, Ustaz, I, I'm in a bit of a mess. Uh, can you send me some money? I say, Akhi, give me your account details, I will transfer, go pick it up from the, from the ATM. So you go, you type in your key, the money comes from an ATM machine. It would be wrong for you to start kissing the ATM machine and say, thank you, thank you, ATM didn't send it, Akhi, I sent you the money. It was wrong for you to think that you get your money from this job. But no, Allah is the one who sent it. Whichever ATM he uses is his prerogative. Ar-Razzaq huwa Allah. Say it to yourself till it becomes part of your belief that my provider is Allah. The one who, who cures me is Allah. وَرَبُّ الْكَعْبَةِ the one who cures is Allah. I have seen cases of cancer and the word of Allah cures it. The word of Allah cures it. And I have seen, imagine a room, a family of six, seven people. Everyone is down with the same virus. You give them all the same medication. Four is fixed, three is still sick. Who cured and who gave sickness? If it was medication, they should have all been cured. The Shafi is Allah. Your protector is Allah. Understand, if you become a muwahid, life will look different. I will give you an example. The Rasul is having a siesta, a nap under a tree. The Ashab say it was hot, we were traveling. He rested, he put his sword on a branch. A non-Muslim cam took the sword, and Arab swords are sharp swords. Swords are made for cutting. You know, they used to shave the head of children with, like, with the blade, like, the very sharp things. Some stories I, you know, I read from the past, they say if they chucked the handkerchief down and pulled the blade under it, it would cut it. Sharp. So the man took the sharp blade and placed it on the neck of the Rasul. So the Prophet woke up. Can you imagine? Put yourself in the situation. You know, not a, a blade on your neck. Oh. So the man says, who will save you from me today, O Muhammad? You want to see a muwahid? Listen to the answer, Allah. Who will save you? Allah. Allah, what, the, what, what silly a question. Who, of course Allah will save me. You think because you've got, this is not the word of the, of the narration, this is my explanation. You think because you've got a blade in my neck, somehow Allah, Rabbul Izzah is not there. Allah will save me. So the man's hand froze and it starts to shake and the blade fell. So the Rasul picked it up, put it on his neck. He says, who will save you from me today? Do you see? That um, once you understand the qudra and the power and you're able to identify the majesty and grandeur of your Lord, you're free from the shackles and fears of the ordinary men. He is in the ghar, ghar is thawr. You know, subhanallah, I told them I would be short, but just tell them he won't. Uh, the ghar is thawr, it, you know, it is, it's a two hour climb. I say this in, when, I, when I explain Sira to my students. I climbed it up when I was halfway there, and alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively young. So uh, I, I looked down, people looked small. 
And I looked up and there was so much more to go. You know when you feel helpless. And my legs were starting to, sh- my knees were shaking. So I wanted to cry like, where am I going to go up or down? You know, it was very difficult. But the Rasul climbed this at 53 years of age. Reached the Ghar. The whole of the peninsula are chasing him because there's a 200 camel reward on his head and on Abu Bakr's head. So they bring trackers to track the footprints. They found them under the mountain. They climbed the mountain two hours. Now there's stairs, it's two hours. Before it's probably three, four hours. The peak of the mountain is the Ghar. It's the cave, Ghar al-Thawr. It's slightly elevated like the stage. From the, oh, you guys can't see from there. Yeah? So, basically where you're sitting, that partition there, you kind of climb into the cave. You know, you climb it. So the people sitting on the cave are like sitting on the stage. They can see you, but you need to put your head down and see them. But they've reached the mouth of the cave. It does not make sense to climb up for three hours and don't check inside the cave. What did you come for then? And to make matters worse, the cave has two openings, one from this side, one from this side. So the, the scholars of Sira say, one of them decided he needs to answer the call of nature and went to this side of the cave. The others are standing here. Him, if he looks down, he can see them. They, if they look up, they would you acknowledge that it's a difficult situation to be in. And dead or alive, 200 camels. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was anxious, not for himself, for the Rasul. What happens if at my watch the Prophet gets hurt? So what do you think the answer of a muwahid is? ثاني اثنين إذ هما في الغار إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا أبو بكر don't worry Allah is with us I read stories of the righteous before us falling asleep on battlefield think about that man cannot sleep in a mansion with the latest bedding, nicest ergonomic setting, and he still needs volume to go to sleep. Because Allah has taken away peace and tranquility from their lives. And this person in the thick of battle, Allah blesses him with such peace and serenity that he falls asleep on battlefield. Not unconscious, asleep. Do you understand, Muslims, that once Tawheed enters your heart as it should, once you recognize that the Maker is Allah, the Creator is Allah, the Sustainer is Allah, the Maintainer is Allah, the Shafi is Allah, the Kafi is Allah, when once you understand your Lord, you're set free from the shackles that hold humanity. So Hud alayhi salam came to these people, O oh majestic people, how have you come to the level where you think the non-living thing can become gods of the living? How did a stone become your god? قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ وَاشَبْ أَلَّهِ أَلَوْنْ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُهُ But the problem is, when you've lived in darkness too long, and imagine this room becomes dark for half an hour and everything is 100% dark, and I hold a torch here, it will be uncomfortable to your eyes. Because your eyes used to darkness. So your first attempt, you kind of, you kind of shut your eyes from it and, and, and you go, turn it off. And if you can't turn it off and it's a, it's a lamp, it's a candle, you blow it, you go, This is always the first reaction when haq comes. It's astonishment. It, it's strange for them. Qala ta'ala, bal ajibu 
أن جاءهم منذر منهم فقال الكافرون they were astonished that a messenger has come from to them from amidst them and they said إن هذا لشيء عجاب this is a strange phenomena أجعلوا آلهة إلها واحدة إن هذا لشيء عجاب do you make all these gods into one god this is a strange phenomena do you see? It's strange to the fight, to the eyes. So then the next step is they try to blow it out. Qala ta'ala, yuriduna liyutfi'u nur Allahi bi'afwahihim. They wish to blow out the candle or the light of Allah with their mouth. In our times, the media is very busy with trying to blow out the light, but it's a strange light. The more they blow, the bigger it gets. Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. I went to Hajj, I swear Eskimos are in Hajj. So, they resisted. First with logic, but what logic can meet? The logic of the Creator. So then they say, this is a man possessed. But possessed people do not speak like that. So they said, our gods have damaged his head. And all the while, this wonderful prophet of Allah, Rabbul Izzah, is telling them, oh my people, fear Allah. Oh my people, come to Allah. Oh my people, listen, fear, love, remember the one who gave you everything you know. Who gave you everything you know. He gave you all your livestock and He gave you all these children. And for them He gave you the gardens and He gave you the waters. So eventually they came to this. They said, O oh, Hud, preach or don't preach. It makes no effect to us. Like ramble on, we are not listening. And so... This is, learn this please Muslims. The sunnah of Allah Rabbul Izza is that when you don't listen, He sends you a punishment. Qala ta'ala, وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ so Allah Rabbul Izzah will give you the taste of a small punishment instead of the big one so that you could turn back to Allah. He puts a little inconvenience in your path. You get a headache. You have a fight. You have a little car accident. You lose, a difficulty comes. It is supposed to jolt you to say, hold on, what am I doing wrong? Our predecessors, if they fell off a donkey, uh, this, is, this is here, forget about the predecessors, let's go to the time of the Sahaba. A Sahabi is walking, as he's walking, his eye fell on a lady. So walking, he bumped into, looking, walking, bumped into the pillar, fell down, his face fell in the dirt. But you see, these are the students of the Rasul. So he didn't pick his face up and pretend nothing's happened and walk away fast as you would see, you know, like a normal Hollywood reaction. He kept his face there, he goes, go call the Rasul. Call the Prophet. Why has this happened? So the Prophet said, you sinned. So Allah Rabbul Izzah put you back in line, repent and Allah will forgive. Do you understand? And of the Salaf, the huge scholars, when they used to fall off their donkeys, they used to look at the Mus'af, ah, I did that wrong, that's why Allah dropped me. Introspect at every step of life to say, why is this happening? Don't worry, we have become concentrating on how it's happening. We don't think why it's happening. So we say, you know, the tectonic plates slipped one off the other. It displaced a lot of water. The water came as a tidal wave. It drowned this 
خلص, that's the technical. Why has it happened? Do you not think that way? It's like a father disciplines his son. And the son goes, oh, I know what happened. This muscle contracted. This one extended. It came at this speed. It got me on. Why doesn't he think why it happened? So when a difficulty comes, think why it happened. So the first thing that happened to these people, Allah sent them a drought. When the drought came, the grass died, animals are having problems, they're having problems. So the, the, the Prophet told them, Oh my people, Ya qawm istaghfiru rabbakum, thumma tubu ilayh. Oh my people, repent to Allah. Make tawbah, ask for forgiveness. Then turn to his path, and Allah will send rain upon you again. And not only that, he will make add strength to your strength. وَيَزِدْكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ And Allah will add strength to your strength. So now they reached another level. Where the people said, he is just making up stories about Allah. What's this got to do with Allah? What's about God? This is nature and, and all the rest of it. So the Prophet made a dua. He said, Oh my Lord, help me because they be lying me. And at the end of that verse, they said, We will not believe in you. This is confirmed. So belief is finished. Don't think, belief is we will not believe in you. So the Prophet made the dua, Oh Allah, help me because they be lying me. So Allah Rabbul Azza revealed the verse, told his Prophet, in a little while they will regret what they're, done, what they're doing. In a little while. So when drought comes, what do you look for? Huh? What do you look for when a drought comes? How does, rain, how does water come? What brings rain? Clouds. So they're looking for clouds. Are you guys with me? Are you sure? All right. So they looked at the horizon. And wow, can you imagine for a thirsting people, a black cloud is coming. And black cloud means it's laden with water, it's full of juice. You know, it will, everything will grow. So when they looked at it, they said, قَالُوا هَذَا عَارِضٌ مُمْطِرُنَا This is the cloud that will bring us rain. Happy days are coming. Allah said, بَلْ No. وَمَسْتَعْجَلْتُمْ بِهِ This is what you were asking for. رِيحٌ فِيهَا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ A storm in which there is a severe punishment. And I watched as part of my research, footage of tornadoes and hurricanes and, and bad winds. And, and I, I say this, I was watching satellite images and the hair on my spine was standing. As it gathers up in the command of its Lord, growing energetic and strong, carrying up with it, coolness and water and a tunnel of air gushing from the middle of it. And that tornado comes and it just strikes the land for a few minutes and goes. And in that few minutes it tears it apart. You know, you see houses fly. The wooden ones, not the concrete ones. Because you think Ustaz is exaggerating. You know, And you see animals, livestock in the, in the wind. But it's just a moment. And I have been not in storms, in dark clouds. And I saw traffic pull to the side and just stop because they were scared of the darkness alone. I, I, I can't feel this because I try to feel a story when I'm talking. But Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَأَمَّا عَاد and as for the people of Ad, we sent upon them the wind. 
ريحا صرصرا عاتية A cold hollowing screaming wind سخرها عليهم سبع ليال وثمانية أيام حصومة For seven nights and eight days it wasn't leaving, it was just pounding and pounding. An hour would have sufficed, two hours would have sufficed. Seven nights, eight consecutive days. For this people who said, Man ashaddu minna quwa. Who is there mightier than us? So Allah Rabbul Azza said, do they not know that their creator is more powerful than them? So Allah Rabbul Azza erased them. Some scholars say, not only did their bodies fly, their limbs flew off. So that they were left like trunks of trees without its, without its branches. Meaning as in even their heads had flown off. And then Allah Rabbul Izzah concludes, Have you seen any remnants of them? فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةِ For the others, Allah has never said this, you know, do you see any signs of them? Because their signs are still there. Fir'aun's sign is there, the buildings of Samu. For Ad, he says you will not even find them. And there's a su- two surahs re- revealed with, with this topic. One is the surah of Hud. And the other one is the surah of Ahqaf. As in the sand dunes. Because nothing but dunes were left after it was gone. I want to highlight a couple of things here my brothers. And I will finish with this because my time is, is, is running out. That... When the drought came, the Prophet gave them the solution. The Prophet gave them the solution. Make istighfar to Allah. Make tawbah to Allah. Repent. Say istighfar. Say istighfar. Say, seek forgiveness for your wrong and then don't stop that. Change your direction and move towards right. Seek forgiveness and turn towards right. And make it a part of your day, young Muslim and old Muslim and male Muslim and female Muslim, in a time where sin has become pervasive and invasive and it is every, make a lot of istighfar. Because from the punishment of Allah Rabbul Izza, me and you were given two safeties. Two things that we could hide behind and the, keep the adab of Allah away. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ The first, the Prophet. So long as the, Allah said, so long as he is amidst you, I will not punish you. So the Rasul died and left. His sunnah is with us, but the Rasul went. The second one, and Allah will not punish them so long as they seek forgiveness. So the only salvation you have now is perpetual istighfar. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I say more than a hundred istighfar a day and some say in a gathering. Busy yourselves with istighfar. Astaghfirullah al Oh Allah forgive me. Oh Allah forgive. Astaghfirullah al Perpetu- make it a habit. And wallahi, Allah will open all the doors of goodness upon you. And I don't say this all because, you know, I am, I'm wearing a nice, a nice, you know, golden robe and, you, and I know things, you know. In the time of Hassan al-Basri, he was a alim, zahid, taqiyun, naqi, lillahi, al in a shaytani bari, you know, a righteous man. And... Uh, he had students, so he, he was busy with them. And a man came, and he said, Sheikh, um, I have problems. So he goes, well, what's your problem? So he goes, 
there's no rain in our land. Drought has come. Give me something to, to do. So he said, increase the saying of istighfar. So he thanked him and went. The other man came. Sheikh, poverty has struck the, us. There's no income, no money. So he said, say istighfar, increase the saying of istighfar. And his students are watching. Third person came. Sheikh, I can't have children. He said, increase the saying of istighfar. So you know, the, the students look at the sheikh, you know, every person came with whatever sickness, you have one medication, just injecting everyone the same thing. What's, what's going on? So the sheikh said, it's from the Quran. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Make istighfar of Allah. Allah will send the sky down with helpful rain for you. He will bestow you with wealth and progeny and make your gardens grow and around the springs of water will come. All for the saying of istighfar and the returning to Allah Rabbul Izza with, with, with seeking forgiveness of Allah Rabbul Izza. Make istighfar Muslims. Wallahi al azim there are so many stories I can share, but these are my two favorites on this one. Amidst the, the scholars of the past, one of the famous ones is Ahmad ibn Hanbal. You know, he is, they call him the Imam of Ahl Sunnah. And such a giant of an Imam, some of the people in his madhab say, that no one served the religion after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu more than Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Because just in the days of Mihna, you know, for years he took imprisonment and house arrest, but he would not budge on his stance on the deen. So his fame and repute extended across the Muslim land. Everyone knew him, but there was no selfies in those days, you know. You know, you couldn't, you couldn't share a picture. So no one knew. Few people around him and his students and Ahl al-Ilm knew what the Sheikh looked like. Most people hadn't seen him, but they had heard about him. So Imam Ahmad went on a, on a, on a travel from his city to another city. And when he reached that city, night befell him. He was in a masjid and he was trying to sleep in the masjid because in those days there was no hotels and things, you know. So the, the guard came and he said, get out, 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 out of the masjid. So he said, listen, I'm a, I'm a traveler. I don't have any way to go. I will just be here till tomorrow and then I will be on my way. So he said, no, 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 get, get out. So the sheikh went and sat outside the door. Can you imagine? This was a man, you know, who when he used to walk, hundreds would be walking with him and they would kiss his head and hold his books. Hey, Imam Ahmed was Imam Ahmed. Now he's sitting at the, at the door of the masjid. So he looks at him, he goes, didn't I tell you to go? He goes, I'm outside. He goes, no, get out. So he said, listen, it's just... So he said he dragged, he held the imam from his leg and dragged him onto the street. Imam Ahmed. So, and the sheikh, subhanallah, you know. And when he's, he's landed in the middle of the road, across the road was a baker. You know, the one that makes bread. So the baker saw him and he goes, listen, uh, you know, he sees in him signs of piety and, and taqwa. So he goes, come here and sleep in, in my bakery, like, you know, and I, I, am, I am making the dough all night and fixing the bread. Because uh, people will come at Fajr to buy, but you sleep here as I am as I'm doing my work. So the imam thanked him and went and laid down. And, but he's watching him, that every time he makes the dough, he says, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. And as he's making astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So all night he saw this man, astaghfar, astaghfar, astaghfar. So he went to him, he goes, for how long have you been on this practice? For how long have you been practicing this? So he said, for a long time now. I'll be perfectly on time. Akhi. So he said, for how long? He said, for a long time. So he goes, have you seen any benefits? Because no one can be so consistent and perpetual on dhikr and on istighfar and Allah not grant him some favor. So he goes, I've realized that whatever dua I ask, Allah grants me, except for one dua that he hasn't accepted. 
So he said, what dua was this? He said, I prayed that, Ya Rab, let me see Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and so far I haven't seen him. So the Shaykh said, he goes, Subhanallah, he dragged me by my feet to come into your, your, mas your, your bakery. Simply because, imagine out of my city into his house, out of his house when I was refusing, dragged me by my feet so that I could come and answer to your dua. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا My dear brothers, Turn to Allah Rabbul Azza. Wallahi, I don't say this as a nice to say, but all of your, un the problems to all your answers is Allah Rabbul Azza. Your refuge from every difficulty is Allah Rabbul Azza. Turn to Him with a, Wallahi, turn once to Allah Rabbul Azza. And you will find your Lord more merciful and more accommodating and more accepting than the kindest of the kind of this world. And my dear brothers, this is my last with you. In a few hours I fly back home. Um, pray for your, for your brother and my Allah. Rabbul Izza protect you, guide you, and guard you, and have mercy upon you. فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتُ إِنْ تَكُوا حَسَنَةً فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ تَكُوا سَيِّئَةً فَمِنْ نَفْسِي وَشَيْطَانِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَبَرَكَاتُهُ